Hello. Eddie Javon. Hey, how are you, sir? I'm well. Good, good. Busy man, busy man. Thank you for joining us, man. Yep. Yep, I'm moving and grooving. I see. <laughs> I'm on the road now, even. I'm on the road now, but uh, just let me know when I'm ready or yeah. what I need to talk about. We got you. <laughs> All right. Three minutes to the start of the Crushing Collegiate Captivity Conference call, hosted by Dr. J and the Drill Team. It's the Hope Call, Health, Opportunity, Prayer, and Empowerment. Good evening. It is 7 p.m., the start of the Crushing Collegiate Captivity Conference call for this week. I'm Dr. J, and of course, we have to start it the way we usually do. Welcome to the Crushing Collegiate Captivity Conference call, where today we will give you hope to instill health, opportunity, prayer, and empowerment. I am your host, Dr. J, the leading lady. I have my drill team here, and we are in position to help you with your college mission. We want you to get turned up, to get learned up, so your parents' time and money won't get burnt up. Let's introduce the crew. We have the smooth brother from the South, Mr. Gentleman's Council himself, Mr. Adrian Taylor. What's up, man? Man, how you doing? How you going? How's it going? It's good. 
Thanks for being on the call. Oh, you're welcome. We also have the Miz, who is about her biz. My right hand, Miss Candace Brown, is in our crew, but she is celebrating a great birthday milestone with her dad, so we want to wish him a happy birthday shout out. And finally, my brother Greek, who keeps it elite, Dr. Javon Gordon. What's up, bruh? What's good? What's good? We turned up. What's good? <laughs> We missed you last week. We're glad to have you here now, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I appreciate the opportunity. This is awesome. Absolutely. All right, so why are we here? And the reason why I brought everybody here, and we got some great speakers on the line and people that are ready to engage you as adult students and also the parents of those adult students, is because many of us have been in college Many of us have gone, gotten degrees, or, you know, we decided to go other career paths, but, you know, we face good times and we face some challenging times. And just based on experience, I just kind of felt like, you know, before we send these adult students off and, you know, we want to make sure that we give them some empowering words and that, you know, we instill hope in them and also, you know, give them some words of encouragement and possibly even pray over them because of all the stuff that's going on. Uh, we're going to touch on some various topics. Um, however, again, like I say in every call, research shows that 85% of college students experience some sort of stress while in college. And if they don't get the help they need to help with that stress, it's going to continue to get more and more challenging. So we want to make sure that we help them, you know, identify those stressful situations, how to handle them, so that way they don't become precursors for other issues that may arise. And we're going to talk about those issues today. Um, and also ways to combat them. So I want us, as a group, we're going to share our experiences if we have them personally or things that we have encountered with students because we do have college administrators on the line and those who have worked in a college setting. But like I said, many of, his, of, of us have gone to college, so we want to make sure that we share these stories with you. Um, before I bring, you know, some of this, well, introduce the other speakers, do y'all remember the, the movie Higher Learning? Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank goodness somebody answered because I'm like, Lord, don't make me be the only one that's too old on this call. But <laughs> I'm like, I love it. Yes, I just thought it was. Did it. Oh, really? So it's yes, fresh sir. in your head. It's fresh in your yes, head. Yes, now, yes, of course, I'm going off of my, you know, what I remember. But I, in my opinion, I think that was like the one of the realest college-related stories or movies that was made. What's your thoughts, Adrian? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, I think if you dealt with any of those type of situations in college, of uh, you know, I've, I've definitely told you before, feeling like an outcast, you know, you definitely can, can understand. And because you, you open up to so many different cultures, man, you know, when you go to college, if that wasn't something that you experienced. So it could be very yeah. shell shocking. Wait a minute. You, the, end of, the, the end of what you said cut off, man. Can you repeat that again? I said it could be very shell shocking. Absolutely, absolutely. Darlene, you mentioned you saw it? Yes, I did, and I thought uh, I have to agree with him. I mean, it did touch on going into an environment where, you know, you're coming out of high school where you might have known uh, most of your high school students that you were there for four years, and you're thrust into this environment with all these different people from different cultures, and you kind of feel out of sorts and uncomfortable. So I thought the movie did a great job of um, – reviewing the challenges that, that students face when they go away to college. Absolutely. I mean, it was racial profiling, it was discrimination, mm -hmm. it was relationships. And then I remember Remy, you know, I'm like, this dude is really about to Kirk out. And I was like, does that really happen in college campuses? But in these past few years, stuff like that is really happening. And it's like, you know, yeah. parents are entrusting, you know, sending these kids off, well, I'm sorry, these adult students off in the hopes that their, you know, their safety, you know, is being protected. But, you know, at any rate, if they can't deal with stress or, you know, other mental issues that, they, that may arise, then stuff like this may happen, and that causes concern, hence why the call is so important. So I want to bring, I mean, you already heard a little bit from one of our speakers, but I want to bring them on the right way. Hey, Dr. J, before you go on to that next uh, thing, can I say something about that, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure, 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 my bad. No, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, but I didn't chime in. You know, one of the things that was the disconnect, and it is the disconnect for many of 
uh, those that are within my generation or generations Y. Mm-hmm. The disconnect is that there are not enough of us, like yourself and the drill team and the Darlene Browns, around. If you recall the movie, there was the, the, the professor, mm-hmm. and he was like their mentor, their guy kind of. But the thing was, he was at least 40 years older than they were. Yeah, yeah. So when they were at the party or when they were after the game and they found themselves, remember they played Nintendo and all that, Super, uh, yeah. super, te- super Technical Bowl and all that kind of thing, <laughs> you know, when you have people in place like the drill team, you have individuals that are closer in age, 10 to 15, maybe 20-year gap, they're able to uh, readily uh, ad- adapt and able to um, – understand you in a different way that someone that is way older than you uh, may not be able to. So, that, you know, yeah. while you're listening as college students or uh, future college students or as parents, administrators, it's important that you, you really lean your ear in to hear the opportunity that really exists here. So that, that's something that I really get out of the movie. So, yep, that's my piece. Thanks, Dr. Gordon. That was Dr. Gordon, <laughs> drill team. All right, so let's get this thing started with our guest speakers. She's a life skills coach, inspirational speaker, and training facilitator with 25 years of professional experience that provides divine empowerment. She'll change you on the outside while cultivating that leader on the inside. Please welcome Mrs. Darlene Brown. Hello, hello, and thank you for what a wonderful introduction that is. No problem. We got two more to bring in. He's a motivational speaker, rap star, educator, and inspirational performance artist. Forget Buster Rhymes and his extinction level events. This person brings the heat with all out massive action, creating a positive reaction. Please welcome Mr. Brian Heat. Let's go, let's go, let's go, Brian Heat in the building. Let's get ignited. Yes, sir. She is a business owner and social media expert. This person changes businesses and changes lives at the same time. The CEO of Distinctive Opulence, Ms. Nikki Hilliard. Hello, everybody. Thank all of y'all for being on the call. I'm pretty sure you got a lot that, to say to these students and these, uh, and these parents. We want to make sure that they feel secure and that they understand, you know, the things that they may face. And I'm so happy that all of you have agreed to provide your expertise and your experiences on the call today. Not so, a problem. Oh, no problem, no problem. Um, so here's a few. I, I want to ask you all, what are some, just name one issue that, you might have faced or that you see has been faced in college, ses- I mean, college um, environments. Just, you know, put out a word that relates to the issues that you have experienced as well. Darlene? Well, I'm, I'm going to go to the uh, having just uh, wrote an article on the top five challenges that uh, non-traditional students face. I'm going to go to the, to the one that is most prevalent, which is finances. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of students, um, even if, you know, their parents find a way to get them to, to school, you know, to college for higher learning, um, or whether they're getting, you know, financial aid or if they were lucky enough to get a scholarship, there's still financial challenges that relate to, you know, can I cover my room and board? Can I cover my books? You know, am I going to have enough money to eat? Um, yeah. Those are real challenges, and particularly for students who, you know, are living locally and attending a local community college. You mm-hmm. know, that's, that's a real factor, um, not just having money to get there and pay for tuition, uh, let alone will I have enough money to pay for books. So if I can't pay for books, am I going to be prepared to pass the class? Or, you know, am I going to be able to have something to eat, a granola bar? Am I going to have bus here? Yeah. I mean, those are real challenges, and they create stress for students, you know, uh, in terms mm-hmm. of they, they're hopeful about their future. They understand the importance of higher uh, learning and education and what it will give them. But the real truth becomes, okay, so how do I get to the next week? How am I going to have money to get to class? What if I don't have money to pay for my books? What am I going to do? 
and I'm pretty sure a lot of us can relate. We talked about that on the um, We were blessed to have uh, Chris Bridges on the call last week, and we, and we really drilled in on finances and credit and, you know, how to be responsible. And, you know, I definitely encourage anybody that's listening to go to www.likeleaders, L-I-H-K, leaders.com in the media section, and you can find the playback for that. But, yes, that is so true. Finances is huge. Mr. Heat, what you got for me? First of all, I want to say thank you, Doc, uh, for inviting me on the call. Uh, someone who's been an educator for about 14 years, uh, I've lived in the trenches in terms of transforming the lives of young people and also being transformed by their experiences personally. So I just want to say thank you to the drill team and yourself for putting this call together. But, um, you know, one, I'd like to reiterate Darlene's factor, uh, Sister Brown, my, my sister in this inspirational industry making this thing happen. But I want to reiterate and just kind of add on that, it's, it's not just about the stress of the, the classes, but also probably something that, that, uh, that, that Sister Bridges talked about was is just being responsible with your finances because you and I both know these same college students that stress uh, about not having the finances will have a $300 per J's on. And we'll go to a after you know, and go to a club, and, and we'll pop bottles and, and spend a thousand dollars without blinking. But then walk up and tell an administrator or, or a program manager at a college they don't have the money. You know, most of us, you know, we as African Americans, we're like you know the, the the third largest powerful consumers in the world. You know what I mean? So it's not that we don't have the money. We don't. We're not really fiscally responsible with it. But you know, moving on beyond the finances, the biggest piece about college to be very, very honest with you is most college students don't know why they're there. They just happen to fall into college because their parents have told them this is the next step for you. Now, the worst thing that can happen, if you realize, because we're all going through it, is that kindergarten through 12th grade is free in most cases. So when you fail a class or you mess up, you're not really paying financially for that. But if you come into college lacking a purpose, lacking a clear vision on why you're there and you're failing classes, dropping classes, you literally, in the worst economy we've had in about 10 years, you literally are flushing money down the drain. So as all things start with my pieces, with Darlene's pieces, with Doc's pieces, it's knowledge yourself. Who are you? Where are you going in your life? What are your values and beliefs? And how does college equip you to move on to your next level? College is not life. College is a step or a means in the right direction to make your dreams and your hustle and your, you know, manifesting the things that you want to make happen. College is that support system that gets you there. But if you're in college, you have no purpose. You're in college, you have no vision of why it's going to help you. That stress of failing classes, finances, will be magnified because you won't even know why you're there. Mm, wow. That's powerful, Brian. I know, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Bringing the heat. I love it. I love it. Um, Ms. Hillier, Nikki, anything you want to add? Um, just basically piggybacking on Brian, not having focus. Um, a lot of times in, in high school, you know, you still have the parents around to kind of guard you and keep you focused on doing homework and getting assignments done. When you're away at school, you don't have that. So there's a certain amount of focus that you have to have when you go to these colleges that some people just do not have. So they fall into the trap of partying. They fall into the trap of peer pressure. And they fall into so many traps because they go unfocused. Absolutely. And, and it's interesting you mentioned that because um, on a previous call, or something, something that I normally talk to students about is college binging. And I'm not talking about, like, drinking and stuff like that, even though, that, you know, you binge, you can binge drink, you can binge eat. But the, the reason for some of that is that the balance is not there. So, you know, you might have done, been into the grades and, you know, been into school and stuff like that, and you kind of left the social life alone. So by the time finals are over, whatever, it's so like, you know, I'm going to go out and party and do my thing, and then you overdo it. And the thing is, like you were saying, Nikki, I, I, students just need to find that balance so that way it won't be as stressful, you know, like Brian and, and Darlene said. That way, you know, it's, it, they're able to face those college challenges just a bit easier. Now, it's not always going to be easy, but, you know, the more that you kind of lessen your, your level of stress, it can be less challenging. Uh, the drill team, Adrian or Dr. Gordon, what you got? <laughs> Adrian? Yes. I didn't know if you wanted to go first. Oh, that's okay. It's all good. <laughs> go ahead, sir. So, I mean, there's a lot of challenges, especially uh, 
when you decide. I, I, I really like what my man was saying as far as being uh, monetarily sound, you know, spending $300, you know, shoes and, and going to the club, popping bottles, and, and spending unnecessary monies on, on things that we don't necessarily need. And he's very, very right about us, you know, being one of the top consumers. I mean, I read those statistics all the time. That's just like, well, we I say that for another call. I don't want to get all philosophical on y'all in that that <laughs> that sense. But we have to we have to definitely do better, man. We definitely have to do better. Absolutely, Doctor Gordon, what you got? Well, <clears throat> what I would say is I live often by a poem. Um, an unknown artist, uh, author, that is. Arrogance is a term used by those that cannot discern the immersed confidence of a man who knows he has no limits. I realized when I was in college and that I realized this about young individuals. Now they lack confidence. Therefore, they limit themselves. And then they, I, like I did, I would cut myself off because I didn't know who I was. Like Mr. Heat was saying, I wasn't going towards anything. I didn't know, I didn't have a sense of purpose for being where I was. So I did go out and do the pop the bottles, and I did this. I was with the chicks and all of that, and I was just running, spinning wheels because I lacked confidence in who I was. I didn't, it is a special type of confidence that comes in just being content with who you are growing into. It's the wrong thing to be content with who you are and not wanting to grow, but it's a, a special type of anointing that's there when you are content with who you're growing to be confidently. Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that because we do want to talk about uh, self-esteem on this call. But before we start getting deeper into the topics, um, I wanted to bring uh, Mr. Heat back to the stage. Uh, sir, if you could just give some words of encouragement excuse me, or something that will empower our students to, you know, as they go into this semester, you know, the stage is all yours, sir. Well, I, I, it's so funny. I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a practitioner of learning. Uh, I'm someone that realized that I've only become the person I've become, uh, obviously through my own trials and tribulations, my own victories, but also on the backs of giants that have come before me, the Les Browns and, and those other motivational speakers, the, 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 the Marcus Garveys, the Malcolm Xs, but also more people that are close to my, to my chest would be my father. My father is, uh, is college educated, has a master's degree from Carnegie Mellon, now works as a consultant in terms of procurement all throughout the country. And I got some time on vacation last week to spend some at his feet time. I call it at his feet time where I just close my mouth and let him pour some wisdom on me. And I said, Dad, you know, I work with the young black males, and, you know, I've been doing it my whole life, and I stay in the trenches. If you were to tell a young black male or anyone who's entering into college right now, what is the mindset they need? to be successful. My father said, you need to think like an entrepreneur from day one. You need to think like an entrepreneur from day one. I said, Dad, elaborate, because I know what it means, but give me some more so when I feed him, I feed him correctly. He said, son, he said, in this marketplace, there's not a lot of loyalty that exists in companies. The days of you graduating from college, getting a job, being there for 30 years, getting an enormous pension of gold watch and retiring to Florida just doesn't happen anymore. Nowadays, companies are going to the highest bidder. What you need to learn is that you are a personal brand. You are a personal brand. Your skill set, your ability to learn things quickly, even if you don't know how to do it, you know how to acquire the information to get the help to get your skill set up. What value do you bring to an organization? What value do you bring to the bottom line? What is your white space? How do you jump off the page? All that to say is when you're preparing for college, understand the skill sets in your classroom, your learning styles, how you study, how you manage your time all goes into your entrepreneurial skill set. This is a big, 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 big misnomer, uh, Doc, that college students don't get the connection that the same work ethic and skill base you have to be successful or lack thereof in your classes, you'll need that when you start working. You can't be a C, D, or F student and then become an A-plus worker. You can't be a C, D, or F student and become a CEO mogul and be successful because those skill sets won't be there. 
So, so, from, so from day one, when you enter into that classroom, move and walk like a mogul. Move and walk like a CEO. Realize if you had employees, do you want to pay someone who's doing a mediocre job, who's not coming to your workplace and working your business? No. So why would you behave that way? Operate as an entrepreneur. Keep your personal brand thorough. Demand excellence and demand greatness in everything you do. Awesome, man. That is awesome. Walk like a mogul. I know that's right. <laughs> Get that confidence built in you. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I want to bring Ms. Darlene Brown to the stage. Uh, we were talking a little bit, well, uh, Dr. Gordon was talking about having confidence, and me and uh, Ms. Brown were talking about, you know, what about self-esteem and things that you might, you know, experience when it comes to actually knowing yourself in, in college and just kind of piggybacking off of uh, what Mr. He said. You have to find out what you want to do so that way you're not going around and around in circles and, you know, walking wondrously as to what the heck am I about and who am I. Um, I know for, for my business, I say discover what you like and become who you love. And that was a mistake that I made as a college student because, again, I was walking around just wondering what the heck am I going to do, changing majors, you know, not knowing what I was going to do with the major that I changed to. But, again, you know, with God, everything worked out, everything came full circle, and I realized that, you know, my psych degree was what I was supposed to have. However, you know, we want to make sure that you learn that early because you might not have to spend the money that I had to spend to finally figure that out. So, uh, Darlene, uh, what do you have to say about the issue of self-esteem when it comes to being a college student? Oh, I, I think that it is so critically important, important, and it goes back to the point that Brian he uh, talked about is why am I in college? And so often a lot of students, like he said, are, are in college because it is what's required. You know, we live in a society where higher learning and education is so necessary, um, not just to compete, but to survive. So when students are getting out of high school, they may not even know what they want to do, but they know they got to go to college. And then they get there, and they're not focused because they don't even know what they want to do. And it's difficult for you to believe in yourself or have confidence in your ability if you don't know what you want to do. And I think that self-esteem is really the key component to not just being successful academically, to being successful in life. You have to, one, believe that you have value, regardless of, of, you know, if you're an A student or a C student, you have to know that giving your best means that you have value, that you can contribute. A lot of students don't even believe that in themselves. They don't believe that they matter. They don't believe that they have value. So self-esteem is something that is so critically important in our students' lives, not just when they get to college, before they get to college. You know, and it really starts at home. It starts with cultivating an environment where the, the student says that I can try, and if I, and if I fail, it doesn't mean I'm a failure. It means that I can work harder. It means that I now know what my, what my level of skill set is and what area I might need to improve on. It also allows them to know that it's okay to ask for help. We do need a team, and, and not just, you know, I always say that no man or woman is an island, but we need a support team. So college students need to know that there are resources. They need to know that there's no shame in asking for help. They need to know that there's no shame in saying I don't understand to a professor because that's what they're there for. They're being paid to ensure that, A, you understand. So, so when you are having problems, when you go out and you get those resources and you ask for help and you get the tutors, then you begin to feel good about yourself. Then you begin to feel, you know what, I can do it. And it's not, it's not a bad thing that I struggled in the beginning. I think that a lot of students, when they're not doing well, they give up and they walk away in shame, and that impacts their self-esteem to even believe that regardless if they get a C or an A, that they actually can matter, that they add value in terms of where they're going in their future. Hey, Doc, I'd like to uh, add on to, to Darlene, because Darlene just tapped on something very important. I do a piece called uh, Chasing Fascination and Manifesting Dreams, and one of the components of when I do that lecture across the country is that you have to build adversity into your plan. You have to build adversity into your plan. A lot of people walk into, now this is the thing, you have to understand that anything you want in this life that's worth something is going to be hard to get. If it's your destiny, it's going to be even harder. So as you go from one level in life to the next, 
you have to know that life is going to be more demanding. And what I think is people tend to underestimate the work ethic. People tend to underestimate the beautiful experiences that failure provides you because it tells you right now, you know what, you're not strong enough, push harder. You're, you're, you don't know that concept. Study more. And what it does, it builds capacity for greatness. Is that it makes you work harder. Sometimes you have to get knocked down to rise like the mighty phoenix and become stronger that way. Guys, get to know this. There's, there's a concept that we know as motivational speakers. Become comfortable at being uncomfortable. That if you believe that every test is going to be an A, that every teacher is going to speak a language you understand in the classroom, and every assignment is going to be something you really want to enjoy, you're being kind of delusional. You have to understand that things are meant, things are meant to be difficult to make you stronger. Actually, I don't know about you, I run towards adversity because I know if it doesn't kill me, it makes me stronger. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Good Nikki. Stuff. Yes, yes. Nikki, do you have anything to add on the topic of self-esteem in college? Um, to put you back on Darlene, one of the other things in growing up and going to college and trying to figure out who you're going to be is the pressure of who your parents were. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we try to uh, uh, gain the approval of parents and colleagues and friends by going to college, becoming a doctor, because that's who my mom wanted to be and who she wants me to be, but not really who I am. But, and not being secure and strong enough in ourselves to say, hey, that's not me. That's not who I want to be. So sometimes there is a pressure of being who everyone else wants you to be, and you're not strong enough to say, this is who I really am. And so we have those who go to college and who fail and who have bad grades because that's not where they want to be. You know, you might not want to go to a four-year university. You might want to go to a trade school to be an auto mechanic, but because you're the first one in your family to go to college, you have that pressure. And when you're not secure in you and where you want to go and who you want to be, it's hard to say, Mom, that's not me. That's not what I want to do. I want to go to trade school. So that's some of the pressure that, you know, college students have as well. Hence producing stress. And sometimes stress can, if it's not handled, it can grow into, you know, situations of depression. And I'm glad you're bringing it up to make students realize, you know, what could really be the true foundation around the stress and stuff that they, they may feel. Now, um, I know that um, Brian Heat and Darlene Brown touched on, you know, the self-esteem and building confidence and understanding who you are. Um, that, but I want to speak on real quick the, the other side of self-esteem as far as image and, you know, what does a college student look like? What are we pressured to look like? Um, Adrian or, or Dr. Gordon, do you have any experiences as far as image on a college campus? Um, I'll go first. This is Adrian. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, very much so. Uh, you know, and, and we like to call it, you know, swag. We we got to get that swag up. We got to be, you know, in the freshest outfit, which is, you know, that polo shirt with them uh, khaki pants and some Jordans to match, you know, or so forth. I mean, but that's what we got to be, man, and that's because that's what our society say we need to be like. You know, we need to dress mm -hmm. like this. We need to be that way. You know, and, and anything else is kind of like you're an outcast. So, I mean, and, and you know how appearance is, man. It's, it's, in our generation, it's very, very heavy. You know, it's looked upon very well. I mean, so it's hard. I know it's hard for kids out here, but you, you kind of got to, you know, go your own route. You can't worry about what other people think, man. You know, you got you to gotta get your swag up yourself and, and make your own swag and not follow the masses, you know what I'm saying? It's way to be swagged out and, and not spend, you know, $150 on some shoes. You know, you can go get you some Converse, man. They they hot, too, you know. Yeah. Which is what about. <laughs> they sure are. Bucks, you know? Yes, they so, are. <laughs> you know, so it's other ways to, to get your swag up and, and look fresh. So, you know what I'm saying? H&M is a cheap store as well. Mm -hmm. Swag up, man. So, you know, don't follow the masses. Just, just be you, man. And, and if people don't appreciate you for you, and don't worry about it. Because guess Absolutely. what? You know what I'm saying? The people that's actually going their own route, them are the people that, that's gonna be making way in the future. And, and and opening doors for everybody else. So don't don't follow. Be a leader. Hello. All right. Dr. Gordon, anything you wanna ask sir? Keep it elite. Elite by definition, if not by status, station or money. 
how much swag you got when you put your cardigan on or whatever, your bow tie set across the front, whatever. Elite simply means the best of the best, the choice part of a thing. You have to understand that you are part of a thing, a system of people, uh, a society of young individuals that are going to college, and no one else has your it but you. Like Nikki was saying, she was uh, speaking about how, you know, you have this inner thing that you have that you, you say, you know what, I want to be a mechanic or whatever you it is that you want to be inside. You feel it. You know what it is. So you've got to find that it, no, uncover that it, because you know it's there. It's not that you need to discover it or uncover it. You need to identify it and keep it elite, regardless of what someone else is doing. I can care less about what the next man is wearing because my stuff is the best of the best because I'm wearing it. I shop at our shoes thousands of times over, over the years. I can care less about what someone else thinks because I know if I really want to, I can go to Saks. I can order offline. I can do whatever I want in life because I found that grounding, that foundation that says I am elite because I have chosen to be that way. That goes back to the confidence, the self-esteem. I don't care about what, he, he, what hat he has. He has business and I have a uh, new era. So what? My joint rocking just like yours is. I'm wearing it, and I'm turned up because there's two ways you can look at this. You can get turned up about what you are, who you are, you get shut out. Mm. You turn up or be shut out. And the only way that you're going to be shut in or shut out is if you don't turn up for you. Yeah, yeah. Get it, Dr. Goy. <laughs> turn um, up for you. I like Yes, that. turn up for you. And and it's interesting because, you know, you talked about clothes and stuff like that. And I know for me, even personally, I experienced situations with self-esteem when it came to body image. And um, I want to read, like, a small part of a poem that I wrote. When I was going through, you know, my whole situation and not really loving myself like I should have, but I wasn't right, loving the right person, which was God, you know, if I, if I put all my love in him, then I wouldn't know how to love myself. But at the time, I didn't. I got to be honest. You know, I strayed. But um, I want you to listen to these words. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it gives you an idea of the fact that I was trying to keep up with something that, you know, you know, the small body and the small waist and trying to be a person that that physically and biologically I could not be. <laughs> Just it, it was what it was. And, I, again, I was not perfect. So um, I'm going to start from the middle. It says, don't get me wrong. I didn't have a problem with my weight, so it seems. But those words pierced my inner soul and ruined my self-esteem. Images in the mirror were only a dream. Yes, my relationship was over, left with badger dreams. No more cuteness was seen. No more sights of a young black queen, just a middle finger in the back of my throat and a messed up self-esteem. Images in the mirror were only a dream. Not anorexic, bulimic, tired, and hypoglycemic. Eat a lot and purge it up. Eat nothing, hungry, but I sucked it up. Power exercising every day two hours, becoming a wilted rose, no longer full bright flower. Weight shedding, I don't look healthy, but I have decreased my size, and the images in the mirror tell me otherwise. I really had to learn to love myself, which was very hard when you're dealing with college situations of stress and situations that, you know, kind of beat on me and got me down and depressed. So I didn't know where else to go except to pretty much, I took it, on, took it out on myself, and I want to encourage those who are even thinking about what kind of image they need to have on, co on a college campus. That's not, for, that's not your concern. Your concern is to get your education. Your concern is to make sure that you become the best person that you can possibly be. Your concern is to sit in class, listen, and, and learn all that you can. Suck it up, soak it up, and be fat on education. Don't worry about whether you're fat or fat to death. It doesn't matter. You are still the person that God created you to be, and you have to realize that. That outside of that, as a college student, you have way more to worry about than how others feel about you because you have to love yourself first before anybody else will. So I uh, love I it. Bring, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know that's right. 
So, um, I wasn't expecting to go too far, uh, but hey, it's how, I, it's how I'm feeling. I was in the moment, my bad. But just to bring it back, <laughs> um, I want to talk about, I talked about um, depression a little bit and that possibly building from stressful situations. And I want the students to know that when they are feeling these issues of depression or feeling down or feeling like they can't do it, I need you all to give them a bit of advice or inspiration or words of empowerment that we can send them off so that way they already have the tools that will build them up or they're already built up even before getting on campus and knowing that they have the confidence to really be successful. So I want to start with Ms. Nikki Hilliard, if I could. Is there any, are there any words of encouragement and empowerment that you want to give our students this evening? I would like uh, to leave these words and let everyone know that you are amazing. You are special. You were created to be exactly who you are. It takes time to learn who that person is, where your path is going to lead. Just because your path hasn't been like someone else's doesn't mean that you won't be as successful. You first got to love yourself. Then you got to love God because God will make everything else work out for you. And once you love yourself and once you love God and you seek him daily to figure out where you are supposed to go, what path you are supposed to take, because sometimes we get off path because that's not the path we're supposed to be on. That's not the direction we're supposed to be heading in. Find God. Get a good relationship. Get a great circle. You don't need a circle full of yes people that agree with everything you do. You need a circle of some yes people. You need a circle of some people that's going to check you on your mess. You need some people that's going to keep you accountable at all times. If everybody's speaking well of you, that, then there's something wrong. You need to have a couple people saying, hey, Nick, you going the wrong way. Hey, Nick, that doesn't look right. And then just stay focused and stay grounded no matter what. You know, um, as we were saying, I, you know, every, everybody has weight problems. They say once you, your freshman year, you're going to lose some weight and you're going to gain some weight. You're going to lose some. <laughs> the meals are going to be nasty. And as my cousin did, she became the oozer noodles queen. So she lost some weight. <laughs> then by sophomore year, you're going to pick it back up. But just be comfortable in who you are, know where it is you want to go, and if you really don't know where you are going to go, find somebody. Get a mentor. Get a coach. Get a big sister. Get a big brother. Get somebody that's going to help you walk this path because you're not going to be able to make it alone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, at, uh, Adrian, is there something you want to add? Is there anything, any encouragement you want to give to the students that we have on the line? Yeah, I want them to understand that, you know, things that have happened in the past doesn't matter anymore. You know, this this is your fresh new start on life going to college. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, what was, what you have done, what was said about you, how your high school career was. I mean, this is way to start all the way over fresh, you know, come in ready, willing to work, hit the ground running, you know, make friends. You know, talk to your teachers, find mentors like Nikki just said. You know, everything is going to work out. I know it will. You just got to want to do it. You know, stay prayed up, and, and everything will work out for you, man. Everything will work out for you. Be a leader, not a follower. Get your swag up and go get it. Just that simple. Uh, get your swag up. Love it, man. Love it, man. Dr. Gordon, words of encouragement? that you can offer the adult students and their parents? The greatest thing that we, we possess as men is that we were made in the likeness and image of God himself. With that being the case, there's nothing that is not already implanted inside of you. You have to just speak life into yourself. When no one else is around, you may have to encourage yourself, but be confident enough to know that I can speak and what I speak comes to pass. If you read in um, Genesis, chapter 1, God spoke. Verse 9, God spoke. Verse 15, 16, 17, somewhere around there, God continued to speak. Until verse 31, then he saw. 
it may take you four years to get a 4.0. So what? You keep speaking in this in your life. It may have t- taken the, uh, Dr. Janice all her life and to this point to get confident enough to say, you know what, I'm happy with me. But she kept speaking life over herself. You keep speaking things to your existence, and you're going to see it manifest. I don't care what the next man say. Block their words out. They're nothing but haters. Click the cancel delete button. No, I tell people all the time. You have a visible and remote control remote control around you, and it's in your pocket. Imagine it, it has a big red button on it, and it's called the cancel delete button. Anytime somebody comes up with some type of negativity, even if it's your inner hater, press the cancel delete on that thing and keep it moving. Turn up and turn out because you'll be shut out. Don't speak things into your life because you have the possibilities that exist in front of you. you got opportunities. Just know it and believe it. And as Miss Nikki said, as I end, if you don't have a mental get one, sometimes we don't have the confidence, confidence to believe in ourselves. That's okay. But as Les Brown would say, if you don't have the belief yourself, stand on the shoulders of someone else's beliefs until your belief shows up. Wow. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Um, I hope that you all have gained some insight from this call. Um, we, want to, we want you to know that God is there for you, just like Dr. Gordon said, you know, to, to give you the security and the safety that you need. Um, we want to send you off in prayer that Dr. Gordon is going to give you, but I want to keep you in mind, I mean, I want, to, I want you to keep this in mind that, yes, there may be some fear walking on campus, but you know what? You are, you are the only one that can control the level of fear that you feel, and just know and be confident and sure, hey, they accepted you on that campus. You are there for a reason. Now make the most of it because you are an asset to this world. So, Dr. Gordon, if you could please close us out in prayer, you know, sending our students off in confidence and being able to cover them as they go on in their respective universities, I'd appreciate it, sir. Sure, no problem. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the, these precious people, your people, your lovely children, Father. I charge angels over them now according to the way has been granted to me, Father. I allow this time, this space to speak life into their life, Father. I pray that they have the full confidence to do any and everything they set their hands to. I empower their minds with words of affirmation, Father. I put a demand on the seeds that have already been planted inside of them that they will sprout a mighty um, limb, and then they will, will come up in their life in the time and the days that trouble will show up, but they'll be okay. And I pray, Father, for confidence, praying that they will not cast out their confidence, but rather they'll uphold the traditions that have been set before them. I pray, Father, they'll find themselves. They'll find the things that they'll, they already have inside of them. Father, I pray over them being the, the royal priesthood, the, the holy nation that you have called them to be. Father, in this time, I, I speak down any type of vast uh, imaginations or um, principalities and powers that have already started to try to come up in their lives. And I speak against them now now in the name of Jesus, saying, saying that, you know what, all of those things are depleted. All of those things are deleted, and nothing will come and hinder their flow. Nothing will stop them from getting and completing the, the task. I pray, Father, that they will start right. They will stay right, and they, they will finish right in a spirit of excellence and a spirit that you have given them that is without fear. It is in your son's name that I have prayed, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, Adrian, is there anything else that you want to address with the students that we have on the line, sir? Man, I'm, I'm good. I, I just wish them the best of luck, man. You know, life is hard, nothing easy, but you know, a lot of prayer, man, and everything to work out. You know, just stay prayed up, and you'll make it, man. You'll get it. I promise you, you will. Thank you, sir. And Ms. Hilliard, anything you want to add, ma'am? Um, the promotion that my ministry is doing, I have a ministry called New You Ministries. We yeah. deal with um, men and young people, empowering them, letting them know that they can be renewed, refreshed, and restored through the work. Uh, and we do a back-to-school event. So we're doing a back-to-school event where we're giving away um, a laptop to a college freshman um, who need it, and we'll also be supplying them for the entire freshman year with care packages and goodie packages, you know, 
snacks, sheets, school supplies, and everything else like that. So if anyone's interested, um, you can send an email to info at distinctive, D-I-S-T-I-N-T-I-V-E, opulence, O-P-U-L-E-N-T-E dot com, and then we'll get back with you and get you the information that you need. So any college freshmen out there, you know, if you need a laptop and, you know, you, you could use the extra help throughout the year, we're here to help you. Thank you so much. That's an awesome ministry that you have, Ms. Hillier, and we appreciate you sharing that with us. If you need any um, inform additional information on how to be uh, successful in college, you can contact me, Dr. J, at www.likelihkleaders.com. We want to thank Mr. Brian Heat, Ms. Darlene Brown, Ms. Nikki Hilliard, and, of course, the drill team, Mr. Adrian Taylor, and also Dr. Javon Gordon. And also we want to give a shout-out again to Ms. Candace Brown. Thank you for joining us on the call. God bless. Thank you.